Hi everyone, welcome back. Like always, I'm glad you are back, and I always want to remind you about the uh, subscribe button. I really appreciate that if you hit that. And last time we talked about the uh, growth rate and growth habit of plants, so I'm going to say it again. Come to know the growth rate and growth habit of every plant you love and jot it down. That is critical to getting young plants to mature healthy into the plants you put them with. And the key is, it's about collecting sunlight. Every plant we plant has to be able to collect sunlight as it grows through years and years in the garden. As one plant is inhibited to collect sunlight, that plant will slowly decline and be overwhelmed by the plant it's put with. Now let me give you an example, quickly. If you take uh, 30 native plants, and you take 300 of each, and three of them happen to be plants that seed freely from seed the first year, say Solidigo rigida. If you put Solidigo rigid and you put 300 of that with all the other plants that are in there, the Solidigo rigida will seed the first year from seed and become very opportunistic and fill in amongst all the other plants and you will have nothing but a garden of Solidigo rigida because it will shade out the other plants before they can reach maturity and before they get into a position to even reseed on their own. So basically that's what we're, we're looking at is the nature of a plant as a child and how it will establish and create a healthy community with the plants we put it with. And that is self-discovery. That's one of the most beautiful ways to learn and adapt to becoming, to change is through self-discovery. I could never tell somebody how to live. The minute you think you're doing something to make someone healthier by telling them how they should do something, it's nothing but rebellion. None of us want to be told how to live our lives. None of us want to be told what clothes to wear. We realize our own way of being through self-discovery, and that's so exciting. So let's move into this discussion with our two questions. How do plants find their home in nature? And that's a nice question. How, how do plants generally find their home in nature without human input? That's through seeding. A plant will seed into an area, and if it's a, an area that's healthy for that plant, that plant will thrive and grow and become established within a community that it found a home in, and it will nurture and love and share resources with all the plants within the community. The second question, what does a container mean to a plant? I've touched on that before, that no plant on earth has ever evolved in a container. So plants are totally dependent on humans to nurture and care for them in a pot. And even through nurturing and caring, after a plant perennial flowers in a container, it is on a decline. So we only have a short shelf life for plants to be healthy and take that healthy plant and put it into the earth to create even a healthier situation for that particular plant. So when you realize the shelf, short shelf life and the importance of getting a container into the ground, uh, what we look at is how do we do that quickly and how do we do that in a caring way? So, so one way to go back and look at how plants love to be cared for and how plants enjoy compatibility is to look back at remnant plant populations. So the image you see now is the boreal forest floor of our most southern boreal forest in Door County, Wisconsin. And when I'm standing there, when I first went there, and when I'm looking at it, I see the healthiest place I can be. Because that boreal forest floor has 12, 16, 18 species living there per square meter. And each plant is living in the affection and intimacy of another plant. And that is healthy. The diversity of that site is healthy. The intimate relationships is healthy. That's not a site that, boy, we gotta get there and divide that and quickly replant that because that has to be unhealthy because all these plants are touching. They're touching it in a way we love to be touched. We love to be held. We love to be nourished. We love to be cared for. All of life loves intimacy and sensuality. That's just the nature of being alive on Earth. And it gets to the next image you see. The next image, it's all about, which we discussed briefly before, it's workability. Workability, the condition and performance of our actions. And that means how we put plants together in communities and create relationships. Can those relationships grow into each other in a healthy way? And can they be cared for 
in, in an efficient, easy way with the knowledge of a gardener. So the one image you see has no workability. These are some of the images you might see on a lot of our gardening magazines based on market-driven process of buy this, buy that, have this, have that. This garden has no workability. The, guard, the plants in this garden have too many needs. There's too much to do at too high a level and a lot of it without the knowledge of even how to care for it. So the other, and another thing to consider is working with lists of plants. When you work from a list of plants, having one common characteristic could create an abstract approach to selecting plants. The image you see on the screen, these are all plants that have good foliage. But what does that really mean? Where can they live together? Do they live in dry soil, wet soil? Are, are, do they flower in spring, summer, and fall? We don't know anything else about them. So how would you know how to use these plants with good foliage in a plant community based on one characteristic? So it can be confusing, and when we work off a list and put plants together based on all good foliage, we have a garden that really can't be cared for and can't, can't be maintained or, or loved in a healthy way. So what we move into is looking back at growth rate and growth habit. And you see this image up here, it's a simple grid paper. And on the grid paper, I placed a, a 60 square foot area and I simply looked at the growth rate and growth habit of two plants, starting simple, because this whole process has to begin in an easy way and move into something more complex as we come to know the process. So the Cecilaria and Allium have similar growth rate and growth habit. So I put in a 50% combination, and I put in a different pattern. You can see how I laid them out. And you can do this today at no cost. It's a pencil and a piece of paper, and maybe an eraser, because we make mistakes. And you immediately, when you do that, you put a circle around each plant. And that circle, based on the plant's growth into the following year. So in a six second time period, you've predicted how those plants will touch in a one year period. And you can see on the second image, you can see how much soil is exposed to sunlight. And when you cut the foot candles of light below 1,000 or 500 foot candles of light, agricultural weed seeds can't germinate. So the quicker you knit your community together and take away sunlight exposed to soil, the faster you can minimize weed competition. And the next image we look at is a grid, and I've added one thing. I've added Coreopsis agrib. And by adding one element, you can see how that changes the pattern. So by adding one element like the Coreopsis agrib, that'll redefine how the Cecilaria and Allium relate to each other. And this is just one example, a beginning example. You could take Echinacea and Perovskia, you could take Retitiba panata and a little blue stem. And if you know their growth rate and growth habit, you can see what percentages of plants based on how they relate to each other from youth to maturity, how they will combine and how they will live together successfully year after year after year. Again, once you know their growth rate and growth habits seasonally and after they mature, that will never change. Just like I know my arm is not gonna grow another foot in the next week, year, or two years. It's going to be how the size it is now. And I know that's not going to change. And again, as I mentioned before, and we'll get into this more later, if the conditions change the plants are living in, sunlight, moisture, or soil conditions, that will affect the growth rate and growth habit of the plant. And dramatic things have to change. And we'll go into that later. And as I look at that now as our springs are getting wetter. And because we have more moisture in the spring, we've had more rain in the last two to three years, that does affect the way a plant starts, especially the salvias. If they start off too wet, they're not going to mature and they actually are going to decline and it's hard for salvia to get healthier again once it has a bad start. And again, we'll talk about that later. So after you put your patterns together, come to know how your plant patterns will grow into each other in reality. When you see them in this image, you'll see plants put together as young children. And when you look at that, how will those two patterns relate to each other? Is one plant in the pattern going to shade out the pattern it's joined to? 
and then you'll say, well, maybe I need to take two out or three out in the next three to five years. You can start to predetermine what you'll be doing in the future with that garden. And it's so much fun to know, to understand that, because it's nice to garden based on what you can predict into the future instead of being forced to do things simply because you, we didn't have an awareness of it. And you can see in the following image, here's a simple plan I, I got from Pete Outolf. I was working with Pete on a garden in Omaha and we were eating pizza. He drew up the finishing plan to a walkway and what he simply did, he, he put the patterns down, you can see it in the image, and then he put the patterns and then he created grass and sedge groupings that the patterns would fit into. So you can see the overlay there. So I simply laid out Pete's patterns that he designed for me over a pizza, and then I filled in the sedges and grasses in between the patterns. So that gives you a simple beginning of how the garden design can flow together. And then you can create, in the next image, garden cards. So I've created 24 garden cards here that I simply look at the combinations I made early with my grid paper. The first one is 65% salvia, 35% nepeta early bird. Why did I use less nepeta early bird than salvia? Because the nepeta has a more aggressive growth rate in the spring than the salvia does. If I put in too many nepetas, it would overcrowd the salvias and eventually the salvias would disappear. And each 24 of these patterns, I can combine them in a number of different ways and connect them together with bunch grasses or short grasses. And I can do this in a number of different patterns. And sometimes I look, where can I get ideas? How can, how can I create a thought to even begin some of the patterns? And I discovered uh, Pierre Bonnard. I didn't know who he was, but I found some of his paintings as I was at, uh, at the Art Institute in Chicago. And I right away realized I can create plant patterns from his paintings. I just looked at his, his patterns in the painting and I saw the percentage of Coreopsis or Salvia and I just wrote down the plants within his patterns. And in the next image, you'll see how that helped me create a garden setting, a garden pattern. So there's a number of ways, like I discussed earlier, looking at moss on bark, lichens on rocks. There's so many patterns in nature or simply looking at impressionistic painters for myself. Um, so the end of it is, it's practice, practice, practice. This is a different approach I know for a lot of you, but yet we're gonna go over this many more times outside in the field, talking to people, visiting with some guests I'll have, and we'll look at how combining plants through growth rate and growth habit is so important. But again, it's practice, practice, practice. So I want to say thank you again, and I hope to see you soon. And again, if you hit the subscribe button, we'll be together for many, many more shows, especially when the weather warms up and we'll be outside running all over the place looking at how this comes into play. See you later.